Let's talk about how, how we use methods in our programs. So what is a method again? Well, a method is just a container for a group of statements, and those statements usually complete some type of task. A method is a reusable container. So if you have some statements that do a little bit of work, if you put those statements in a method, you can reuse the method again and again and again without having to type all, the, all of the statements again and again. Methods are independent from one another. So the statements and variables in one method have no connection to another method. Each method is an independent group of statements. However, methods are used by other methods. So the, the correct terminology for using a method is calling a method. You say one method calls another method. That's how they work together. But because methods are independent from one another, to work together, there needs to be a way of passing information from one method to the other. How do you call a method? Well, the syntax to call a method is just typing the method name and passing any values you need into the method. Now, if you remember the hierarchy of C-sharp elements, methods exist inside a a, a container called a class, and a class exists inside a container called a namespace. So if one method wants to use another method, you have to include the entire path to where the other method exists. So you call a method from the class in which it was created, and you call the class from the namespace in which it was created. Now if you use a using statement in your code, the using statement allows you to use all of the classes inside a given namespace. You can use them directly without having to type the namespace part of the path. So for example, if you have the using system statement in your code, then you can just call all of the methods from any class inside the system namespace just by calling the method name from the class. So the using syntax gives us a little bit of a short shorthand when using a method. The six methods we're going to be using at the beginning of this of our uh, videos are the following methods. We're going to use the write line and write method to print data to the console. We're going to use the read line method to get input from the user. We're going to use the read key method as a kind of a temporary pause at the end of our application. And then we're going to learn about the parse method. And there's an int.parse version and a double.parse. The parse method allows us to convert string data types into numeric data types. Let's visualize what, how a method works and, um, and how we can use a method. So because a method is an independent box or container that contains some statements, Sometimes that method requires outside information in order to do its job. If you have a method that adds values, for example, that method needs to be passed the values in order to add them. You have to give it data so that it can do its job. And sometimes a method will return a result. So, for example, if, a, if this method were to add two numbers, I would need to pass two numbers into the method it would do the adding and it would return the added result out of the method. So if we think of one method being our, our main method and a second method being a method we are using, our main method needs to pass data into the method so that it can do its job and then it's, it, the second method will return a value back to the main method. Now the, the syntax of a method, you have the method name and all method names have a pair of parentheses attached data that you want to pass into a method goes between the parentheses. The parentheses define where the values that go into the method are listed. Now these values going into a method are called arguments. And then, that, and then the value coming out of the method, I like to visualize the, the method as spitting a value out from the left hand side. And I'll show you why in a minute. But the value that comes out of a method is called the return value. So let's look at a couple of um, examples of methods. Not all methods take input values. Not all methods return a value. 
But let's look at kind of all three types of methods we might be using. So let's start out looking at the right line method. In order to use the, the, the purpose of the right line method is to print data to the console. But the right line method needs data passed into it in order to know what to print. So here, when we use the right line method, we have our parentheses, which define where the values go into the method. And we pass in a string literal value here. This hello world is our argument. It is going into the right line method. And then the right line method will print this text to the console. Now the right line method does not return anything back to us. So when we use the console.writeline method, we don't worry about anything coming back out. We just type, type the uh, right line method syntax, pass in a value, and we're done. Now the read line method is a little bit different. The read line method allows us to get user input, and then it returns that user input back to our main method. The read line method does not require any input values to do its job, so we just have an empty pair of parentheses. No input values are needed. The read line method waits for the user to type some string characters, and then when the user hits enter, all of those string characters are then packaged as a string value and then returned back to our, our method. So because the console.readline returns a value, if I want to save that value in my program, I need to have a string variable on the left-hand side ready to assign the return value. Okay, So whenever a method returns a value, if you want to use that value later on in your program, you have to store the result in a variable. Okay, We use the assignment operator in order to put the return value into the variable. Now our final example is the parse method. I'm calling int.parse. We will go over in a later video how the parse works. But the parse method requires a value to come in, and it returns a value when it is done. The parse method takes a string representation of a number and converts it into the actual number representation of a number. So in this case, to use the parse method, inside the parentheses, I need to pass the argument, which is some string value. This string value goes into the parse method. The parse method has the statements that knows how to convert, for example, the string version of the number 2 into the integer version of the number 2. We're converting data types here. The, the parse method is going to return the integer value out. And if we want to save that value in our program, we need to have a variable on the left-hand side in order to catch that return value. 